Salut tout le monde, c'est Capet de Coin Academy. Ça va être une interview en anglais. Je suis avec Anthony de Aleph Zero qui a un Layer One basé sur l'écosystème Polkadot. Aujourd'hui, donc Anthony va nous présenter rapidement qu'est-ce que c'est qu'Aleph Zero. Il va nous parler de son rôle et on va très rapidement bah, passer sur le projet, les milestones, la roadmap, etc. Anthony, how are you today? I'm perfectly fine. Thank you for having me. Uh, I don't speak any French, but <laughs> because you shared question beforehand, I more or less have an idea of what you were talking about. Yeah. Um, Yeah, well, so, the conference is amazing. The conference ETHCC is amazing. I agree also the side events. So today we'll talk about Aleph. Can you explain us very quickly what is Aleph Zero? 100%. So Aleph Zero is a, is a layer one um, blockchain. Uh, we started back in 2018 with designing a new consensus protocol, uh, peer reviewed it, and then integrated the protocol with the substrate stack from Polkadot. So we think of this as you would think as, say, Uh, the Cosmos SDK equivalent, because just using Substrate doesn't mean that we're a parachain, uh, even though mm. we have a parachain slot for bridging purposes. And one sentence, Aleph Zero would be a high performance, privacy enhancing network for uh, developers, users, uh, also enterprises. Okay, and you, what is your role in uh, Aleph Zero? I'm one of the co-founders and I'm responsible for everything that's not um, uh, tech. Okay. So more like marketing, PR, marketing, biz dev? Correct. Okay. BD operations, uh, exactly. I see. So you talked about Substrate and uh, Parachain, etc. Why did you choose Substrate and not Cosmos SDK or forking Bitcoin, for example? Sure. Um, so we, we actually started with Golang. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because Cosmos SDK is based on Golang. Um, so the first iteration of the consensus protocol was built in Golang. Then we discovered Rust. Um, and the fact that Substrate is built with Rust and also that we can get more performance out of the Rust implementation of the same technology concept that, you know, that, that mm. our R&D team uh, chose. Uh, and that really was, uh, was the gist of it. Along the way, we also received a grant from Web3 Foundation to develop a randomness beacon for Substrate. So that helped a bit to tune in into the ecosystem and also the language. Um, Rust is also... I think for seventh or eighth year, like the, the favorite developer's language according to Stack Overflow. So it was, well, a no-brainer really at some yeah. point. And, uh, a nice choice. So just a reminder, Rust is a programming language like C, like Golang, etc., yes. which is used more and more in Web3 in general, by the way. Correct. And uh, you, you choose performance. You are very focusing on performance and privacy. Yes, yes. So these are the two most important things. Well, uh, one added benefit to Rust is also, uh, you know, you already have large ecosystems using this language, like Solana. You've got yeah. uh, the entire Polkadot ecosystem also. Uh, so developer onboarding to LF0 would be less painful than if we were to do it with Cosmos. Yeah, I see. I see. Also, I don't know if you know, but Starknet, the layer 2 on uh, yeah. Ethereum, they are making a language called Cairo, and it's more and more like Rust right now for performance. That's, that's good. So what's your biggest milestones? Like, what are you the most proud of now for Alex Zero? Building a team that likes to work together and stick together, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, like we have, at the moment, we have around 50 people in the core team. Most of, most of these are developers, although the business area has grown significantly this year as well. Um, and this is, I think, like, honestly, having a, a strong culture and like a degree of understanding while still liking to hang out outside of work is, is important for mm. longevity and sustainability of the project. And, you know, it's something we pay a lot of attention to. Uh, beyond that, uh, the community is insanely active and we've got some diehard supporters to whom we're very thankful to always. Um, and aside from that, like we really do two things as far as innovation is concerned and the rest we just take from, you know, what, what's out there. So the first is the consensus layer and the performance stuff. So this, this was one, like our largest milestone, I would say. And the second is the privacy stack that we're doing now, which is uh, going to be based on both ZK and MPC. Um, and how it differs is that it doesn't use hardware components, which means it's cheaper for validators. Uh, it's going to be a bit slower than trusted mm -hmm. execution environments, but uh, we do believe that the benefits will outweigh the Um, uh, this yeah. cost. It's just going to be more universal and it actually has a potential to become decentralized at some point. How much uh, validators do you have for the chain? 125 or 124. Okay, and this is cap or you will continue to grow your number of validators uh, no, for no, performance no. purposes? You keep we, it this way. Yeah, we definitely want to continue to grow the number of validators. Um, right now, this was achieved without, I would say, uh, 
too much incentives. Like validators were incentivized to test things on testnet retroactively. <coughs> they got like you know airdrops. Um, Mm, so uh, we want to have as many validators as we can, honestly. Uh, at the moment, the committee size uh, is 14 nodes. 10 of those are from the Alpha Zero Foundation, so the network is not decentralized yet. Yeah. Uh, we're on our way to get there. Uh, and as the time goes by, the committee is going to be increasing, as well as the number of validators, hopefully, as well. Okay, and uh, what are the next big step, like the biggest point of your roadmap right now? The biggest point on our roadmap is we have the ZK stuff done, and that's yeah. working. It's not deployed on chain uh, because we're also simultaneously working on the compliance layer with mm. coin firm for, for AML purposes, uh, with different identity firms to kind of have a very solid, mm, you know, like verifiable identity system for users who want to utilize the privacy features. Mm. I think this is something that was lacking in the space for a while. Um, and then the, the 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 rest of the product that we're working on right now is the MPC part of things. This is from what our R and D says far more complicated than uh, you know zk solutions. And we're going to be deploying all of this once um, once we have the compliance layer built up. Um, and then further along, we're also building a we can call it a showcase app, uh, which is called Common, which is going to be a privacy enhancing DEX uh, on a zero. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to have two modes. First one is going to be trans transparent mode, which is like your standard AMM DEX type of situation. And the second one is going to be the privacy mode, where you're going to have uh, even like a private DEX aggregator and, and a bit more features to play around with. Yeah, like you don't want to leak your data. You, exactly. You want to take care about MEV, this kind of stuff, yeah. I think. Precisely. Okay, that's great. I will put in the description of the video all the links if you want to follow Aleph Zero, like the Twitter, the website, etc. Thank you very much, Thank Anthony, you too. for this interview. I hope you liked it. And uh, if you liked it, make sure to put a like, a comment, and see you next time on Coin Academy. Bye. Thank you. Bye.